So now we're going to find the angle of the, of the, what do you call it, the, the slot I've cut in the heel in order to join the sides to the soundboard. So now I measure the length of the side up here in the upper bout from my fixed spot here, following following the curve until here. We square this one up. We take the little piece of cardboard. I'm going to do the same on the other side. So now I'm going to glue this side to the, to the heel. Very nice to clean this well. So do you only glue to the, the braces and the heel? Yeah, at the at start here. You don't glue all the way around? No, this I do later on when we have... I'd have to fix the shape with the, with the heel block yeah. first. So now I'm going to glue the other side just like I did the first one. Ah. It's amazing how fast the wood swells up with the water and the glue. So that even though this took maybe two minutes, there's always a lot, already a lot more resistance in the slot. Almost completely perfect. I only have to put you know, a oof, tiny weeny bit pressure there. And I know some builders, they would say, ah, that's not important. But to me it is. 
So this is coming together now. And you have the join of the sample there. So I think that's quite good. Chop. So now we could say that the guitar is more or less we started the assembly. The next process, which I will not do right now, it is simply to glue all these tantalones, small little hand cut things. You glue one at a time with hot height glue like this. It's something to put some nice music on the radio and just relax. You can buy these so that they all look the same, but I make them myself in sound is the same, it's no different. So what we've done today is to, we have uh, final bended the sides, we've cut the shapes, we have uh, <coughs> glued it all together, set up the guitar and glued the, the end block on, so that it's now, it starts looking like a guitar. And the next thing that's to glue the small tantalones down here and to put uh, the inner curvings on here and the, the bottom on and that's it. Then it looks like a guitar.
Yes.
Today we're going to uh, put bindings uh, on the top of your guitar with purflings. As you can see, I've routed already, which is called staircase routing, where you have just you just route a little bit for the purflings and another channel for the binding itself. This is a little bit messy sometimes. Yeah, I've pre bent um, the purfling and the binding in the machine, just like the sides. And then the trick now is to get everything together. It's good to be handy with your fingers when you're doing this. So it's pushing and down. And do you chisel that flat when you finish? No, with a cabinet scraper. Scrape. Yeah. I chiseled the uh, I chiseled the purfling first. This is just masking tape, but it, it can, it's very difficult to find a good masking tape because it needs to take quite a lot of pressure. This is a little bit elastic, which I find is very good. This is actually I've tried all brands from here and from there and from the states and from Germany, and this is actually from my. 
Covid and supermarket. <laughs> the village. Just down the bottom of the road. <laughs> yeah, and it's the one I like the most. Isn't that typical? Yeah. yeah, but they have another one. The, the, the wider one, it's absolutely worthless. <laughs> no, the thing I have to do is to structure myself a little bit so that I can be a little less structured. Meaning that I'll have to to be more straight with working in the morning and and not working in the afternoon because it gets too to be too much there's not time for doing anything else I mean if I get up early in the morning I work until 3 that's enough mm. it's actually more than enough Squeeze out what you see here. Which is the favourite word? Glue. That's my that's my favourite English word. I like it. Sounds it sounds good. Glue squeeze out. It's three words. <laughs> yeah, but you put them together. Wow, black and white. Now we leave this to cook for tomorrow. So now it's time for me to go out uh, through the curtain. Yes, you have to walk out the door. <laughs> okay, okay, now now are you ready? Yeah, okay. Bye-bye. <laughs> you were here last time. I've cut the slots for the for the frets. This you do with this, you use a logarithmical scale uh, to, to, to get the exact uh, position of the frets. And I've glued the fingerboard on. I've more or less uh, roughly uh, uh, set the height, so I know which height we will have of the strings above the soundboard here. And I've glued the bridge on. I will show you one thing which I think a lot of people will find interesting. When I put a straight edge on here. What is interesting here is the distance between this straight edge and and my uh, and, and the soundboard. My experience tells me that if I want eight millimeter string height here, this is all more or less. Then I will need to to be able to put a, a one euro or something like that, or a little less, like one and a half to two millimeters in between here. This is one of the small secrets of building a flamenco guitar. When you build a classical guitar, you never really think about it. It's not interesting. But it's, for a flamenco guitar, it's so extremely important. So today I'm just going to hammer the, um, the frets on. I've cut them all out here, the line, and I glue them on as well. First I'm going to give them a tiny touch with a, with a, um, with a small file, and I'm going to glue them on as well with epoxy in case something should happen. Uh, it's very easy to remove frets with epoxy because it, it actually, uh, what do you call it when it melts, already with the 80 degrees. So you just put a, a normal iron on it uh, before uh, removing the, the frets. That's very easy. So we're just going to... The reason I do this is in case we're going to do a refret job. Just removing a slightly bit of the slot does that that uh, taking off the frets is going to be a lot easier we're going to make less damage on the on the fingerboard it's very important that you cut with a fret saw or uh, with a fret saw that goes with your frets because all frets are different and your fret saw and your frets they have to go together. So you cannot use whatever fret saw and whatever frets you need, you would like to use. So now I'm going to put the first fret on. Nimbus. <laughs> 
민부우지 가야 돼. 시원하고 왜 필밍 이 스튜피 독. 빈 원더링 what this when in spanish is called the golpe seco which means a, a dry hit and i've always been wondering when i do this I, i i think the same thing every time i do fretting how does a wet hit look and, and, and sound like i mean you can just cut off what i say no it's no problem if you think think what i'm saying is too far out you can just put some background music on or something like that no mm -hmm. complicated part. Not that it's difficult, but it's you have to be a little bit more careful. So I need something to hammer on, so I put an old and it's not old but a stupid plane is worthless. Have you ever seen anyone use that last fret? Classical players. They use it. You actually build with 21 or actually up to 22, you know, with an extra extension here. A lip. But they're crazy. It looks wrong if you don't, <laughs> if, it, if it's missing. I mean, most flamenco players, they get up to here and, I mean, above the 12th fret we play, but it not that, it's not that much. But the aesthetical part is kind of important as well. This I leave for... Um, for 48 hours to, in order to have the, um, the epoxy dry thoroughly. And then next we have the, um, the neck is still a bit, it needs to be shaped. And then it's final sanding and then that's polishing and that's it. Todavía, todavía, pasa, adelante. Vale, vale, gracias. 
para, es una guitarra y para con clavija. De clavija, sí. <risa> Todo lo diferente me, me encanta, ¿no? Sí. Técnicamente. Esto, eh, esto, tiene... esto es plan arte, porque sí. se corta todo esto así de largo, ¿no? Mm -hmm. y, y, y para que, que entra muy, muy bien perfectamente. Sí. Y luego se rompe. ¿Ah? <risa> esto es a veces artista, ¿no? <risa> Complicarse pero, la vida. No, sí, pero bueno, el resultado <risa> al final. ¿Conoce de esa manera? Sí, eh, sí he llegado a barnizar al, 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 pero hace muchísimos años. Uh -huh. Si he llegado a esa... Coge un color de amarillo. Amarillo, muy, muy, sí. Muy, 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 muy. Sí, es sí, sí. beige, amarillo. Es cibre de, de Canadá. De Canadá. Pero no es un cibre... Cibre, cibre. Es un, se llama un cibre falso. Bueno, Antonio, hasta luego. Pues nada, nos bueno, vemos. Hasta la próxima. Venga, hasta luego. Well, here you have it. Your beauty has come back from the from the f French polisher and I think I can say that she looks awesome I've put the pegs on and I've polished the frets um, leveled the frets first and then later on I've I've done the the checking of the fret height that we have the right relief and, and we are ready to to make the saddle bone and the knot bone and then it strings on and then Hopefully that's it. We have to put the tap plate on as well. So, tap plate. I hate it. I always get so nervous. Because if you screw it, you screw it. That's the last thing we do on the guitar. Nimbus, cállate. Oye, estamos grabando, ¿eh? Compórtate. He always gets nervous when I get nervous. Good boy. So you're measuring it by eye and experience? Yeah. It was not, it's not something very difficult. The difficult thing is to put it on. correct way the first time. And what happens if you don't get it right first time? Ooh, you might uh, have to, you might get air bubbles which looks awful and they never disappear. You might get things underneath. You might need to take the tap plate off. And that's horrible on a French police guitar. Because you might really make serious damage takes three to four days to take it off. So, the trick is, if anyone wants to fiddle with this themselves, to, to leave one millimeter here between the bridge and the tap plate. This means because there's always a bit of, the polish will never be perfect here because he polishes before after the, the bridge has been glued on, so there was always to be some little irregularities down here. So it's better to leave it one millimeter here. So now we have to check. And then it's simply just to start from the bottom. The thing is, don't take all the plastic thing off. You will not want to glue the whole thing on at one time. 
That's where it goes wrong. Now we can check, it's okay. Keep it clean. And on, it's very important that you just do a couple of millimeters, five, six millimeters at the max at a time, because if not, you will get bubbles. And trust me, you will get bubbles. I've come to the point where I think a guitar without a tap plate looks wrong. <laughs> because I mostly build flamenco guitars and it's just, I'm so afraid of playing a guitar without a tap plate. So now, dangerous is over. Like with everything, when you have to be precise, don't use force, because then you use, lose your precision, and you don't want to scratch the French polish with a file handle or whatever you use. Time to make a knot here in my bamboo box. I've got little bone pieces. It's a nice one. So we're going to shave this one down to the size. And I'm going to do the, the height of the cut, how deep I want to go. Step one. Well, let's do some string spacing here for our six string flamingo guitar. Wow. 
One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, that's perfect. Now I'm cutting just pre-cutting for the slots before I use the knot files. Are these special files? Yeah, they have more or less the um, thickness of the strings. This is a little bit too too small. I should have bought it a little bit thicker. I could maybe use the one for the second string. The difference between the um, the first and the thickness of the second and the th and and the first string is very, very small. And what shape is the groove? It's U just like the string. The second and the fourth have the same thickness. And the third and the fifth as well. Or more or less, it depends on brand of strings of if it's nylon or or, or um, composite strings etc etc but i mean i make my guitars to work with what i would call normal strings something like everyone uses so i just make them so that most people they can use them i like um, the diazario third string besides that i don't really care the Diazario composite third string, and I don't like composite first and second string. I don't like these uh, Alianza trebles. I just don't think they sound flamenco. I think they're they are too ringy and um, and um, not percussive enough. I I like to change brands when I play myself because sometimes you get tired of a sound, and it's kind of uh, the, the guitar. It, it sounds different. But I prefer my guitars to work with um, what I would call standard strings as De Adario, as uh, Luthier, as uh, Savares. No, Savares I don't use very much. Hannabach. Uh, my own guitar at the moment has uh, Hannabach um, basses. And the next set I'm going to put on is going to be Luthier. I like the Luthier 20 a lot. But I always play with the yeah, that you, third string. The ugly one. I have this um, this little dummy uh, bone, saddle bone, which is almost there. I, I think I might be able to use it because I know more or less how much my guitar is set. So when I when I measure the height of it here, it tells me, ooh, you're a little bit too low, but not much. This is a fine little tool where you can measure here with the string height. So I will make another one, but I will use this one to scribe. This might be a little bit too high, but this we'll find out. Well, the big moment has arrived. This is always an interesting part when you put the strings on. This is a 12 hole tie block, so it's a bit of another story to string it up, but you get used to it.
Is there any reason for putting the third string on first? Yeah, because the third and the fourth string is what makes the uh, cinders, the, um, so it doesn't move. If you put all the first and second, the, it will sit like here, the, the knot. speaks. For the first time she's saying something. I can hear my neighbor, he's, um, he's watching the television and it's Fandango times now on the television. The, f the weekly Fandango competition. Oh, it looks good now. It's actually the thing, the thing that changes a guitar the most. That's when you put the strings on. Little weather station, does it uh, incorporate a hygrometer? No. Then you should buy one. And remember never to leave the guitar in a room where you have the air condition running. Unless you have a humidifier. Let's pitch it up. Well, time to do the slotting. This is a big one. <laughs> Squeak! Oh, you get some nervousness when the guitar's new and it's... Don't say these funny sounds! What you don't want to happen is for the body and the neck to come apart and come <laughs> up towards the guitar. Shilam! And we'll say, well, we started last October. Six months later, back to the drawing board. <laughs> yeah, but if you get it... It'll be a great film. <laughs> it will be... Wow! So, Anders, what... Uh, what else do you fancy it, it, trying in your life? <laughs> no, I would, I would like to say so. If this happened, because it won't happen, it would be bad for my career, but extremely good for your career, because everyone watching you, oh, that's one of all these boring <laughs> documentals. <laughs> Slam! <laughs> oh, yo, yo, yo. This guy, he's got something to tell. Vale. So, let's tune the little thing up. It's really waking up. Do you know what I would like to do now? I would like to leave this here for a little while and go downstairs and have a beer. What makes my guitar different or interesting is that um, it's a very personal product. Um, it's not some kind of industry product. In this way I'm the same as everyone else building the way I build. Um, and I think you get a part of, uh, of my soul, something which you cannot go out into a supermarket and buy. I 
I always look at the at the guitar as as a musician, that it's a tool, and it has to work like a tool exactly the same way as a hammer has to work for a, for a carpenter. This means that I put very a lot of uh, attention into to playability, and that the guitar has the right angles, the right string height above soundboard and, and, and fingerboard, and of course that it also has uh, a flamingo sound, because it's all about aesthetics. We're making something which has to serve to make art.